Hi friends, welcome back to our series of sessions on sensors and transducers. Today we shall discuss about LVDT. The full form of LVDT is Linear Variable Differential Transformer. As the name suggests, many people get confused that it is a transformer, but actually it is a transducer, not a transformer. Because its working principle is same as transformer, that is mutual induction principle, and also the output across its secondary coil is in the form of a differential voltage. That's why it is named as a linear variable differential transformer. It is categorized as an inductive transducer used to measure the speed or position of an object. Generally, most inductive sensors work on the principle of a transformer. Let's discuss this complete in detail. Linear variable differential transformer is an electromechanical type inductive transducer that converts rectilinear displacement into AC electrical signal. Since LVDT is a secondary transducer, physical quantities such as force, weight, pressure, tension, etc., are first converted into displacement by a primary transducer. And then LVDT is used to measure it in terms of the corresponding electrical signal. Here we are seeing this as a Bodron tube or it can be a diaphragm which converts these physical quantities of pressure, weight, etc. into a displacement. And this displacement in turn is connected to the core of the LVDT to give the electrical signal. Since LVDT is an AC control device, there is no electronic component inside it. It is the most widely used inductive sensor due to its high accuracy level. Its electrical output is obtained because of the difference of secondary voltages, hence it's called differential transformer. If you see its construction, it consists of one primary winding P and two secondary windings S1 and S2 mounted on a cylindrical former. Both the secondary windings S1 and S2 has an equal number of turns and is placed identically on either side of the primary winding in such a way that the net output will be difference of the voltage of both secondary windings. There is a movable soft iron core placed inside the former. Hydrogen annealing is done on the iron core to reduce harmonics, residual voltage of the core and thus provides high sensitivity. The movable core also is laminated in order to reduce the eddy current losses. The displacement to be measured is attached to this movable soft iron core. LVDT is placed inside the stainless steel housing because it will provide electrostatic and electromagnetic shielding. The principle of LVDT is based on mutual induction principle as we uh, see it in the here. When AC excitation of 5 to 15 volts at a frequency of 50 to 400 Hz is applied to the primary winding, then a magnetic field is produced this magnetic field induces a mutual current in secondary windings. Due to this, the induced voltages in secondary windings, S1 and S2, are E1 and E2 respectively. Since both the secondary windings are connected in series opposition, so the net output voltage will be the difference of both induced voltages, E1 and E2. E0 will be E1 minus E2. Hence, the differential output of LVDT is E1 minus E2, as we are seeing it in the figure. Now, according to the position of the core, there are three cases that arise. Let's discuss these cases one by one. When the core moves towards S1, that is to the maximum left, then the flux linkage with S1 will be more compared to S2. This means EMF induced in S1 will be more than the induced EMF in S2. Hence, E1 is greater than E2. And net differential output voltage, E1 is equal to E1 minus E2, will be positive. This means the output voltage E0 will be in phase with the primary voltage. Then the second case is when the core is at null position, as we are seeing it in this. Then the flux linkage with both the secondary windings will be the same. So the induced EMF E1 and E2 
in both the windings will be the same. Hence, the net differential output E0, that is E1 minus E2, will be zero. It shows that no displacement of the core. In third case is when the core moves towards S2, that is to the maximum right. When the core of LVDT is moving towards secondary winding S2, then in this case, the flux linkage mostly is with S2 and will be more as compared to S1, which means the EMF induced in S2 will be more than the induced EMF in S1. Hence, E2 is greater than E1. A net differential voltage E0 is equal to E1 minus E2, that is negative, that is E2 minus E1, which means the output voltage E0 will be in phase opposition 180 degrees out of phase with the primary voltage. That's how we have to understand. Then the direction of the movement of an object can be identified with the help of a differential output voltage of LVDT. If the output voltage E0 is positive, then this means the object is moving towards the left from the null position. Similarly, if the output voltage E0 is negative, then this means that the object is moving towards the right of the null position. The amount of, or magnitude of displacement is proportional to the differential output of LVDT. The more the output voltage, the more will be the displacement of the object. If we take the core out of the former, then the net differential output of LVDT will be zero. In fact, corresponding to both cases, whether the core is moving either left or right to the null position, then the output voltage will be increased linearly from up to five millimeters from the null position. And after five millimeters, output E0 will be non-linear. That's exactly what it is. The graph of variation of output with respect to its output position is shown here. This is exactly what is the linear range. And beyond this is the non-linear range. Here what we have. So the specifications of LVDT, if we see, the range of measurement is approximately of the order of plus or minus 0.25 millimeters to plus or minus 750 millimeters. The operating temperature is minus 265 to 600 degrees Celsius. And the frequency range is 50 hertz to 20 kilo hertz. What are the advantages of LVDT if we see smooth and wide range of operation? LVDT has a very wide range of measurement of displacement. It can measure displacement ranging from 1.25 millimeters to 250 millimeters. It has a high sensitivity, which gives high output value so that there is no need for any amplifier circuit for the amplification process. Typically, the sensitivity of LVDT is recorded as 40 volts per millimeter. It has a low hysteresis losses. Hence, repeatability is excellent under all conditions. As, core, as the core moves in a hollow former, there is no friction losses. Hence, it gives an accurate output value. It can tolerate a high degree of shock and vary vibration, especially when the core is loaded with spring. That's why it is called useful for rugged operation. It has a low power consumption because it consumes very low power of approximately one watt during its operation. It has a direct conversion to electrical signal as a linear displacement directly to the corresponding electrical voltage signal, which are very easy to process further. Then it has fast dynamic response due to the absence of friction. Its dynamic response becomes very fast to change in a core position. So the disadvantages being since LVDT is an inductive transducer, it is sensitive to stray magnetic fields. Hence, an extra setup is required to protect it from stray magnetic fields. And again, it is since it is an electromagnetic device, it also gets affected by the variations of vibrations and temperature variation. You see the applications of LVDT it is used to measure the physical quantities such as force, tension, pressure, weight, etc. It is used to convert the displacement to the corresponding electrical voltage signal. It is mostly used in industries as well as in servo mechanism. It is also used in industrial automation, aircrafts, turbine, satellites, hydraulics, etc.
So that's all in this session. Thank you very much for your time.